Hello, this is Truth Be Told Transformation, and I'm your host, Bonnie Burkert. I'm here to bring you tools for transformation to live your highest life. Your highest truth, what is that? What is truth? I, I feel like as I contemplate that, I feel it means really coming to center and listening to what is right for you, what is real for you. How, how better way to do that than through breath? To talk to us about breath work, I'd like to introduce a very wise and worldly man, Prasad. <laughs> Welcome, Prasad. Bonnie, thank you so much. It's great to be here. It's so great to see you. You said that you'd like to invoke, um, do an invocation for us. Sure. To kind of start things off. I, I would love to center in on that. Great. Please. We'll love when possible to start to bring in kind of a ceremonial feel and do a little invocation and consecration. Invoking, bringing in. So we can just take a moment here, speaking of breath work. Let's drop into our breath. And come here invoking this present moment invoking some peace as we embark upon this conversation and diving into breath work invoking all of the teachers before us that offer us these transformational tools these opportunities for truth invoking maybe a little bit of slowness as we take this time to just arrive as we talk more about breath work, we can maybe invoke some heart opening. As we breathe consciously, our lungs can open up. Maybe our heart can open up for this little conversation we're going to have. And as we conclude our very brief invocation here, I'd also like to take a moment and consecrate. Make this conversation something sacred, something for all the viewers and listeners to Maybe take away a little bit more truth or transformation. So just with five or six nice big breaths together. <sighs> invoking truth. Invoking wisdom. Invoking togetherness. And consecrating a great conversation. Thanks again, Bonnie. It's so good to see you. We go, we go back oh. to like 2015, yes. I think, right? Yes, yeah. you're right. Um, I used to see Prasad at uh, Bhakti Fest, Bhakti, Sha uh, Bhakti and Shakti Fest in, in Joshua Tree, and he had the longest mala beads ever. <laughs> they would go all the way to the his record. ankles. I'm really not exaggerating. <laughs> so I was like, I need to talk to this man. And I've come to find out that he's got an incredible path so learned in so many different ways and so it, we had to really sort of pick and choose what we want to talk about because i think that we could have gone a lot of different directions yeah i sent you this long long list of all these things and i was saying bonnie you know i've really been kind of extreme in my spiritual search i've gone to all these far out things breatharian initiation and dark room retreat and psychedelics and back and forth and coming into the breath so we've decided to kind of narrow it down that way a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I would say the breath work is um, the, the breath, period. Let's not let's take the work part of it out. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's probably the common denominator are, are through all of these, ultimately, right? To bring us to presence. Presence, yes, present moment. The common denominator is awareness, Okay. more awareness, right? So as we're searching for the truth, well, how are we going to get there? More awareness, right? And what a great tool. Every tradition that I'm aware of, every single tradition says, let's come back to the breath. Okay, that's great. Well, listen, you started off just by mentioning a few that I feel I, I could use a little background sure. on. So um, let's talk about the breatharian. Okay. All right, so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> can we really just live off of breath? Yes. Prana. Prana, chi, life force, whatever fancy word you like. Absolutely. In the massive research I did before plunging in, there's scientific proof of these Indian yogis that have gone, what's it, Pralahajani was like 80 years without any food or water. And the, the, the scientists in the hospital documented it, said they did it, he did 10 days in there twice with extreme conditions watching him every second. And yeah, he took nothing in and he was fine energetically so scientific proof that it's possible now you and i mm. aren't indian yogis I <laughs> so there's uh, that has to be um taken very seriously when we consider these extreme sorts of things like breatharianism which is the farthest farthest way out but me personally 
three extended dry fasts, no food, no water, and a 14-day water fast can, can attest personally you can live fantastically without food and water for a very long period of time. And I was feeling incredible. It was really coming down to socialness and um, being with people. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. let's start eating food again. You yeah, know? it's interesting, yeah. right? That we do that. Congratulations, though. I mean, <laughs> that's you. really quite an yeah. accomplishment. Huge, huge. And just to know that it's possible. To I'm the sort of person, like, I got to prove it for myself. You right. know? And, yeah, it was incredible going through that and being full of energy and feeling good. You know, mm -hmm. it's quite surreal. Yeah. I want to make sure everybody knows that Prasad is uh, a facilitator at Souls Enterprise, mm -hmm. and they offer many courses. There's lots of different ways that you can work with him and Karuna Dara, who was also a guest on the show mm -hmm. a couple of months back. And so, uh, you know, just please know that if there's anything here that uh, Prasad is available um, to tell you more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask about Dark Room. I feel like I could, you know, sure. weave around and sure. talk more sure. because I'm just so inter uh, interested in in energy. I mean, what all is possible for us? And I feel like that is one of the major themes of all my shows is that mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk to people about, and it could be witchcraft, it could be crystals, but I know that ultimately I just want to see how people are working with their energy to find this wisdom and, and then share it with us. So what is dark room? <laughs> I mean, that I really yeah. don't know anything about. And that was brand new to me. So Karuna Dare and I left um, America in October of 2020 to start traveling, and we were in Costa Rica. was our first stop. We were talking with these people at this retreat center who, who the owner came up and said, Prasad, I think you would really vibe with a darkroom retreat. And I had never heard of it before. So being, like I said, the guy who can tend towards extremes, I said, wow, that sounds fascinating, darkroom retreat. No, no electricity, no light, no sound no anything just complete utter darkness and so i did the research and looked deeper 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 into it very very old in the mm -hmm. in the the yogis would go into dark caves, the caves you sure. know and you know um for very long periods of time up three six nine months sometimes so uh i got caught the bug and in october of 2021 went into 12 days in a dark room retreat. Oh my gosh. 12 days of nothing. Wow. <laughs> it was and that's so interesting at the end of the pandemic when things were presumably opening up a little, yeah. um, <laughs> right? right? I mean, I, I know we were still in it, but we were hoping to be kind but of it was, getting it through it. It was getting it, better. Yeah, it was just starting to open. And, and I thought, yet, and yet, it's almost like you didn't want to come out of that right. <laughs> isolation. The 12 days went amazingly quickly, amazingly quickly. I didn't tell you this yet. I'm literally thinking now I might have to do it again for 49 days. <laughs> you yeah. want to tell us specifically <laughs> the number 49? Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's, What's that number? There's a lot of spiritual traditions that point to 49 days. The Tibetan, okay. the Tibetan Buddhists, a lot. There's the lokas and the movement through the bardos. It takes about 49 days. And there's other um, seven cycles of seven. But what hit me in the darkroom retreat as I was – rewiring some old patterning mm. right i realized when it was coming towards an end you can kind of sense a little bit you're lost in time but i could sense a little bit it's coming towards an end right and i realized oh it takes more than 12 days to create a new habit mm. there is some science behind the 21 days for yes, a new habit that's what i had heard and that's when i so i was proving that to myself in the dark room retreat like oh wow it could take 49 days to entirely rewire some of these things that I want to rewire to go that deep yep. did you sleep a lot hard to say <laughs> the first three days three four days yes uh, slept a ton and then with all that darkness I mean literally can't see your hand in front of your oh my face gosh. like that right I mean it's that dark and so after about three or four days ish the line between consciousness awake and asleep gets a little bit blurry now right? you've got you're kind of an expert as far as all of that. Would I mean, do you feel like you'd have to be fairly adept um, before attempting something like definitely, this? Definitely. Now, because let me say, yeah. I feel, for some reason, I'm, it's coming to me that perhaps is there some fear around that per, for me? Maybe not for you, but yeah. I'm, I'm just, I, it occurred to me, I'm like, <laughs> wow, was it scary? I wanted to ask you that question. <laughs> right, and right. I think the scariness being maybe what comes forth in the mind and mm -hmm. the um, 
ability to process it because I think a lot of us try to process things by talking through it calling my friend or maybe at least consulting the tarot cards or something like that <laughs> or in my, crystal in or my case runes. Runes. Um, there you go. <laughs> uh, I, yeah I'm kind of Nordic like that mm -hmm. and so it's very very interesting and I've never done I mean I've done silent mornings <laughs> you know, I've never done like a, have you done the Vipassana the 10 no, day Vipassana no, no. Okay. if anybody's done the Vipassana please uh, <laughs> shoot us some notes we'd love to hear what your experience was so I'm sure you've done it what seven or eight times at this point I actually haven't done a Vipassana oh come on nope I dove right in <laughs> so yes to your very good valid question there's a lot of preparation you'd want to do before a dark okay. room retreat a lot of meditation prep because one part yeah it is terrifying you're all alone the, just you and the darkness and your thoughts yeah. and your mind, right? It's quite scary. Now, the good news is, and everyone I've talked to has you know, asked that great question, the good news is the door is right there. You can True. leave at any time. You're in control, which is great. Like some other extreme things like psychedelics, you're, anything you ingest is in you, and you're on that ride. The great, the great part about the dark room, the dark, is you're in control. So any time I knew I could leave and end it. True. So that was important. But, but how did you deal with it? If you were really determined to have a certain length of time that you were in there, how did you know? I mean, because if you were losing all sense of time, how did you yeah. know if you had been in there three days or, or through? Or I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, there wasn't. Well, okay. <laughs> Let me talk about one practical piece. Actually, there was a little bit of cheating. Uh, not cheating, but a little bit of a sense in that you still got to eat. I'm not, I'm not full on breath. Yeah, I guess I didn't ask storm. you that part. Yes. Yeah, so okay, so they do part. bring you food. They bring you food. They have uh, a Once little. Once a day? Um, what you arrange, yeah. So in the 12 days, I did four days of two meals a day, four days of one meal a day, and then four days fasting. Wow, so that's so mighty. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it's, it, it that is intense. some serious commitment. <laughs> I mean, I intense. really, really admire yeah, that. Thank you, thank you. Buddy. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's really great. Right. So, bringing it back to the breath, mm -hmm. was that? I mean, I would think uh, sometimes I imagine like if I ever went to jail, what would I do? <laughs> I don't know why I think these things, but maybe I was in jail in the past life or something like that. But what would I do with my time? And I I'd like to think that I wouldn't lose it because there's so much to learn and listen to about proper breathing and, 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 and proper meditation, right? So I think with the breath comes the meditation, mm -hmm. I think, right? You know, it's in, right. in that order. Yeah. So, I mean, were you using tools like that? I mean, what were some of the tools that helped you? You said, you mentioned rewiring. So mm -hmm. what, what, what did you do? Yeah. That's the, one of the great, great things without time and without any set schedule, it was 100% creative. So I would get up and, you know, do some yoga but there's no distractions yeah. other than your mind and what's in there, right? So I could really focus on each move, each breath. And without time, speed becomes very different. So looking at breath or the present moment, really tracking it. No, other, no sense is really going. Or the uh, un, uh, inverse truth of that all senses entirely going right with that much dark your hearing is up your smell is up and the sensations of the body are up so with the breathing it's a brand new experience you know it be, there's a fullness to it and back to that goal of being in the present moment like a good spiritual seeker there's only one long dark present moment so breathing became this brand new meditation mm. it was really really powerful that way <laughs> hmm. Wow, that's great. And you must have felt pretty amazing afterwards, right? Was it, was it um, strange to re-enter? Very, very strange. Luckily, I had like three, four days to, it was a great reminder of the importance of integration. Okay. Integration, integration, integration. Mm -hmm. Because, and they had made, made a nice little ceremony out of it. Went out uh, at like 5 a.m., walked over to the beach. It was this in, down in Mexico, a little town called Mazunte. And we uh, watch, watched a sun sunrise. Oh, beautiful. You know, so that was a great time to have all the dark stars, you know, and kind of start acclimating to the world again mm, and wow. walking. <laughs> right? That's so great. What yeah. a perfect so it's analogy beautiful like that. Watching that sun come up, connect with that light. Right. But yeah, very, very important after a big experience like this to focus on integration for a long time. And truth be told, I'm, what am I now? Seven, eight months out. I'm still integrating. 
mm. still integrating those 12 days of the dark and being with myself and being that far in and all the insights that kept coming and coming and coming, still integrating. And, yeah. and you're just kind of re- al- probably in alignment also, you're, right? Because you're so, you're so open at that point and quiet right. that you can maybe listen or, and be informed, yeah. right? Absolutely. I mean, the, listen, the listening feels active, but the being informed almost feels like it's just coming through. And mm-hmm. then you can sort of you know, maneuver from there. Right. Right? And see how yeah. life unfolds. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, definitely you and your worldly um, travels and, and where it all takes you, it's very, very interesting way, you know, mm-hmm. beautiful way to live life. Right. And the sensitivity, right, to come out of something that intense and being that open for that long. I mean, literally, the cells, that's the re- one part, many, many parts of the rewiring. But one part of the rewiring is the openness. Mm. Literally, cellularly. You know, okay, here we are just in this dark room. So stepping back out in the world is very rebirthing too. Yeah. Right? Like being in the womb, dark, yes. warm, mm. alone. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Safe. So yeah, safe. Because exactly. you knew you were being tended to and mm-hmm. looked after. Yep. And yeah. it's gonna be okay. So then literally coming through this small hatch into this big huge world, it's new. <laughs> Expansive. Like new eyes, new ears, new everything. Was it a rest for you? It feels like it would be a rest. Yeah, just imagine. No cell phone, no TV, no Netflix, no boyfriends to fight with, no parents <laughs> nagging, no anything, no email. No podcast. No plan. <laughs> <laughs> just you. Yeah. It's, I do, I, it's very, very hard for me to imagine, and yet I feel like I could really welcome something like that, like right. full rest. I think it would, I mean, it would rest all your senses, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it's pretty crazy because a lot of times we go like oh we're going to go on vacation and we're still you know out doing long hikes or swimming and the you know in the ocean and playing tourists and everything like that and time away is not restful ever and i just i don't know i encourage our listeners and i i mean i would definitely want you to spend lots of time um listening to all of our truth be told episodes um but i think it's important to take some time also to listen and so that maybe you're not going to be able to do it as intensively as prasad um has described but seriously um i think it's what an opportunity yeah and the little things i want to offer the li- to the listeners just those little things shut your cell phone off an hour earlier, or make a discipline every night at 10 p.m. Yes. or 9 p.m., mm-hmm. totally off. Not just airplane mode or vibrate or whatever, but completely off. Hmm. Bring in that little, those little moments of silence. And okay, I'm not going to turn it on until 8 a.m., 9 a.m. That little, little bit of discipline can go a long ways. 11 to yeah. 6, but sure. <laughs> 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 we'll try that. All right, <laughs> so you mentioned um, the psychedelics, because I would imagine, in a way, um, being in an experience like that, it could have been pretty transcendent. Um, yeah. And so I would love to hear your experience with doing something like that. And this, I know you've done all kinds of intensive meditation mm-hmm. and, and um, work that would open yourself up psychically um, as well as the physical benefits of it. But how does it compare to sure, yeah. some of the plant medicine experiences? And I know, did I did I understand correctly that you've, you um, spent a, a 10 days in the Amazon. That's um, where this came from. What? Yeah, this was uh, deep in Brazil. Oh I was with, with the Yawanawa tribe. In I think you should let me try it on. It would match my <laughs> outfit really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would. That, um, that was, yeah, spring of 2019. And I mean, we uh, flew, I flew from Sao Paulo to a little town and then six or seven hours up the river, like these tributaries of the Amazon, to go deep, deep into the jungle and hang with the tribe. They just got electricity not too long ago and spend like seven ceremonies, seven or eight ceremonies over the 10 days. It was profound, profound. So the ceremonies being ayahuasca? Ayahuasca, yep. Uh, I think six or seven ayahuasca ceremonies and combo. Again, day after day? Or were there several days? No, back to back. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, back to back. I mean, again, (laughs) I don't know that just, this is not for just anybody. (laughs) Do not try this at home. So go ahead. Kids, do not try this at home. I'm going to, uh, I'm definitely, I know we're talking breath work here, but um, I have to know about this. So how was it? And had you ever done it before? Um, I'd done, not not the direct tea itself. Okay. I had done um, some um, 
some dried, some dry, a different form of ayahuasca mixed with um, mushrooms before. So that was like the first time with the full on um, liquid. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, I didn't do it. I just did ayahuasca so. and mushrooms. <laughs> Cocktail. <laughs> Tried a lot of different things. Kids, don't try this at home. Um, but yeah, more importantly was the whole setting okay. you know, of the jungle. And these being with the facilitators, these the lead shaman guys who have generations upon generations upon generations of history working with these plants, right? And hearing these stories about how tens of thousands of years ago, the plants were talking to them, right? Saying, mix us this way. And it's just, at least for me, you know, and a lot of our Western minds, it's just phew, blown, right? <laughs> but it's their cosmology. It's natural. They talk to the plants, right? It's just part of their daily life. So it's great being immersed in that, right? In addition to, you know, obviously the far out things, and I could see karma pixelated. You know, my tradition, a lot of Hindu studies also, so I'm big on the karma. So I could literally visually see karma on some of these journeys and then how to move karma like bricks. It was, wow, yeah, things like that were just that's incredible, <laughs> beyond trippy. So yeah. how different were they from day to day? Hmm. Good question. Yeah. I mean, were you, for example, was it the first trip really intense and then the next day you were tired and, and um, it was a different experience based on that? It was, it was, no, it was more like a ladder building up. Okay. Right, because it, st it stays in your system a little bit. And then the, the combo is that frog that clears you out, too. So we had two combo ceremonies. Wait, tell me about the frog. I don't fully know about it. <laughs> okay. I've heard a little something about yeah. every, every yeah. like frogs are a thing right now. Frog, well, there's two different types of frogs. What is that? There, what are they the, doing? The, the, licking the, frogs? No licking. I mean, that, that's a, some kids lick. You, you, you don't. You don't ever want to lick frogs. Do not lick frogs ever. <laughs> there's some rumors about that. Hashtag frog licking. Okay. <laughs> so there's two types of frogs. The the bufo, which is the the desert one um, around Arizona and northern Mexico. That's 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 a five meo DMT. That's like a, a very short, intense psychedelic journey. Okay. The frog I'm talking about is an uh, uh, Amazonian frog with a combo ceremony. Non-psychedelic, but um, they, they burn a little hole in your, um, uh, in your skin and apply the secretion from the back of the frog that they harvest. And it goes right into your system through the blood. And it's a purging. It, it, it clears out your entire system rapidly. So it's an intense rush oh and then God, some heavy vomiting. So it's so intense. It's gnarly. Very, I mean, very it is. Intense. It is so very, very ancient. Intense. I mean, and the, yeah. like, who ever figured out that putting frog directly frog into poison. your frog poison? Frog um, poison. <laughs> do they have to kill the frog? No. Okay. That's good. the great thing. I was very, very important to me that the frogs they were all released. They were okay because yeah. I think I had heard something about this whole situation with frogs and um, that they're okay. That they're mm -hmm. not. That they're not harmed. Okay. Absolutely. So go, all right. So go ahead. Yeah. So. Day two. Day two. So it really built up ladder-wise, right? And as our trust built, because it's still really, I mean, how, how foreign, you know, we were laying in a little hammock, you know, as raining every day, just adjusting to the jungle. So the senses are all overwhelmed. So it takes a while to just build up and get used to it. And the nice thing is the ceremony piece, the same songs over and over mm -hmm. every time. And okay. the, the plugging into that feeling that this has been going on 10, 15, 20, 30, who knows how many tens of thousands of years, right? These same songs being sung. Wow, that's right? incredible, right? And then altering your consciousness so you're with these people that are living communally, right? It's not apartments and boxes where you don't know your neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, they've got the full village life and you get to be brought in to that. At the same time, all your senses are open, <laughs> everything, third eye is wide open, so you get the best of both worlds, right? The set and setting of everything going on and the support from them, incredible, just incredible. It's so great. I mean, what yeah. a blessing to be received by such wise, mm -hmm. by w tribal elders mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that. I mean, yeah. truly. Yeah. Okay, Fair so. Right. So so that, that chasing sort of our Prasad's little extreme tendencies kind of fueled the dark room because I had heard that 
and a few days into the dark room, the, the DMT can be going naturally from your third eye, your pineal gland. Uh, okay. So there were a couple so, of points. Okay. So this is one of the things that we mm -hmm. wanted to talk about was how to achieve those exalted states through natural means. Exactly. And I, I, you know, I reference breath work because yeah. I, I feel that that is certainly one way. I mean, I think anybody knows. Do you remember as kids how you used to hyperventilate? <laughs> and then you'd be like, whoa, I'm passing out. <laughs> yep. Do you ever remember that? It was like one of the first highs you ever figured out how to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I never had thought about that <laughs> until just now. Um, and so I, I think it's great. I mean, an opportunity yeah. for you to kind of compare and contrast. Absolutely. And I mean, obviously, you were in some settings that it's not going to be that easy for any of us to achieve. But right. I'd still like to hear, I mean, what you think. Because mm -hmm. I, as a practitioner of Kundalini yogi, um, Yoga, we definitely are always looking for the natural high. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're look, I mean, that's what Yogi Bhajan introduced it. He saw right. in the 60s, he saw everybody was like the the very affluent um, Westerners were kind of trashing themselves with drugs. And he's mm -hmm. like, let me show you ancient techniques to achieve that higher consciousness without the substance. Right. Because there can be um, some detriments, not necessarily w with the ayahuasca or frogs, who knows. <laughs> um, it can be. But, yeah. I mean, they're, I don't know. So, and yet you're telling me through the dark room experience, which is probably one of the more intensive um, practices you've gone through, hey, I mean, <laughs> once again, some rewiring right. is a, one of the words, and certainly illumination and um, I, I, epiphanies coming through all of this. So yeah. compare, contrast. Definitely. And, yeah, I want to say categorically and encourage everyone not to go through the extremes that I've gone through. It's not necessary. Or at least talk to him first. And please check in. Yeah, Come to Souls Enterprise and have a conversation and get some deeper recommendations uh, beforehand. But yeah, it's, I, I, I do want to say not required, you know, especially when we tap into breath work. And like Kundalini Yoga, I love Kundalini Yoga. I wear white the majority of the time. It Satnam. Came to me too. Yeah. Satnam, yeah. <laughs> and one part, truth be told, what it's all about is altering our consciousness. Right. And it is as simple as a slow breath, a full breath. If the goal is more awareness coming into this moment and the deeper we get into breath work, which I love because a, it doesn't take the extremes that some of these other things do going off into a cave or going deep into the Amazon or paying lots of money because there are drawbacks. I'm in no way, shape or form advocating. I'm not I'm not pro or con psychedelics or anything far out. I'm, I rec respect them as an accelerator. But, um, yeah, I don't encourage anyone to go out and do anything illegal or anything like that. And I want to give big warnings about the drawbacks. But breath work, plug it into ourselves, no cost, no drawbacks, no danger to speak of. Just a fullness. And s there's so many patterns, you know. Once, sometimes twice a month at Souls Enterprise, we have Souls Breath Work where we get together. And there's certain modalities. I've, been my man of extremes, I got certified in something called Pranayama Yoga, which is a kind of famous three-part breath. But I dove deep into the holotropic, which was, you know, set up to be like psychedelic. Wim Hof has been popular lately with his cold exposure and breathing. I did his thing. And the rebirthing breath work, if you ever tried that. No, I don't. No. Tell. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I, 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 he recommended 20 sessions of rebirthing to have a full rebirthing experience. Is this um, women? Leonard Orr. No, oh, Leonard sorry. Orr. This is another one. So long way of saying I've, I've tried just about everything, and I like to synthesize <laughs> all of them into the soul's breath work. But the rebirthing specifically was this guy, Leonard Orr, who studied a lot of different Hindu tracks and hung out with some yogis, and one day in the bathtub had this full experience, this full cognition and memory of his birth and the trauma at his birth. Mm. So it's back to that rewiring. Yes. Rewiring some of the early traumas that happened in our body. Because there's, you know, I think you've heard all these studies now of how the body keeps the score and trauma is held in our body. Yes. Right. So how awesome and a nice slow breath or deep breath to start accessing some of those things as our body relaxes with these deep breaths mm -hmm. or these certain patterns that we can do together and that's another nice piece of the breath work. You can do it like one-on-one -on -one with a facilitator and really go in or with a group and to be in a circle and to be with everyone else's energy because 
that's one of the beauties of breath work is that ability to alter your consciousness right. physically, mentally, heart-wise, emotionally, and spiritually, right? It works on all the levels. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it can really bring some things up. Um, like, for example, you were talking about the rebirth thing, and I had uh, a thought about myself about, I mean, I don't remember this, mm. but was told that I, um, they had to use forceps to get me out. Wow. And I'm sure that's a thing. Yes. And, and I mean, when you said that, I was, I mean, yeah, we're doing a little breathing here as we talk, and obviously the energy is very high when it is so great to have mm -hmm. um, in studio because I've been having to do so much Zoom. And so I felt that, and I wanted to ask the question, so what happens if you're doing this work and you have this realization? So, for example, mm -hmm. I'm going to say to you, I had a realization around when I was born, and so, I mean, my first instinct would maybe to do some writing around it, mm -hmm. um, but... I don't know. What do you tell people when when they have this? Maybe they're on their own, on their own. And right. I mean, this is obviously an invitation to to join you for for coursework, mm -hmm. so that maybe we can all have a conversation. Other people can share as well. Um, but I don't know. What do you tell the yeah. person that's just on their own and and comes up with something like you're doing some excavation? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, okay. Well, what do I do with this now? Sure. Yeah. And that's a great example. Just sitting here, relaxing. Oh wow, I hadn't thought about the forceps piece. So having done a pretty goodly amount of trauma study, that's an interesting experience to enter the world with that force, right? Yeah. That's going to set up certain patterns, speaking of rewiring, Yeah. right? So I would encourage everyone to go slowly, right? And that's the beauty of the breath work is whatever cycle you're doing or whatever's happening, you're in control. So if it gets overwhelming emotionally or this memory is too much, we can just stop. Well, right. right, and you can return to the breath. Always return For to example, the breath. I yeah. mean, right, so mm -hmm. it's just, okay. Yeah, so that's first, is remembering yeah. you're in control, okay? And then second would be get some help, right? Either with your local handy-dandy breathwork facilitator or a friend or your parents or, you know, your roommate. Don't be alone if something big is coming up, Okay. right? That's uh, Those are the first two pieces I'd, I'd give. And yeah, after that, probably seek professional help, mm -hmm. you know, to really explore it and unpack. Oh, wow, because these things come up. Well, there's an opportunity. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's something to be healed, some insight to gain, some truth to be told about this situation yeah, and an opportunity. OK, so what do you do when you're by yourself on one of these retreats? You could be in, um, you know, in the darkest jungles of the Amazon mm -hmm. or you are in this dark room in, down in Mexico. I mean, did you, did things, again, we're going back to the fear, and I'm not yeah. really a person that necessarily walks around in fear of things. I feel things are pretty steady in my life, and sure, I mean, there's things, there's sadness, there's, mm -hmm. you know, anger, and, and all this other stuff, but I, I but I mean, when ahas come up, yep. and you're on your own, and, and I mean, this moments. is something that, I mean, and I feel like you just choose to do this, like, mm -hmm. you're a... You're a warrior that wants to put yourself in this, and I, you're doing it for us, ultimately. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, I it's mean, not it's for me. It's, it's to be shared. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's – thank definitely. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So first and foremost, again, stressing the preparation, right? Having the intention then going in knowing what you're doing so you, you cannot overprepare, mm. okay? Yeah. But like you said, stuff does come up. So the more you're prepared for it, the better. And how much you can remember self-care, which means self-love. So yes, absolutely, there were times in the dark room in the Amazon where I was overwhelmed with fear, anxiety, whatever. And even coming back to the breath, maybe that wasn't working in the moment. So what other techniques can I bring in under self-love and self-care? I think you said one earlier, journaling. I wrote so many pages in the dark room. And this really? Is funny, funny side <laughs> Could story. Could you read them at yeah. all? So, so I prepared beforehand, and it's like, oh, I, I had a um, ruler, right? So, you know, you go along and oh, write it down. You know, yeah, and yeah, I, I said I had the whole system so I could, you know, set well, and I practiced beforehand, so I was all good, ready. This is hilarious. Come out of the dark room, open up my journal, and the pen ran out of ink the second day. <laughs> All these great insights. Oh, my God. 12 days of incredible insights. Oh 12 days God. of, oh, wow, That's this is so cool. This is so amazing, you know, causing this. Crazy. <laughs> Isn't that funny, Bonnie? Isn't that great? So it was, you were just supposed to clear yeah. those things out. Non-attachment. Yep. Non-attachment. Interesting. Non that all these cool insights, all these neat things. Oh, my gosh, i got to bring this at Souls Enterprise and do this. And, oh, here's a new, cool new program I'm going to do. Lost. So it's like, okay. I mean, 
Let it go. If you wouldn't have had, <laughs> as I'm waving my yep. pen, my Sharpie, which I do not journal with the Sharpie, but um, I love Sharpies yeah. very much. Um, I mean, if you wouldn't have had that pen, because I know sometimes in silent retreats, they mm -hmm. don't want you writing, correct? Correct, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, mm -hmm. what would that have been like yeah. for you? So the journal, so the journaling is one um, great uh, piece. Physical activity. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I'm in my mind and some dark memory is up or I'm in some dark place, okay, let me get in my body and do 15 jumping jacks. Okay. okay? In NLP, it's, it's called a pattern interrupt. Ta so yeah, tell a little some, bit about the NLP. Yeah. Is, the ta is it the tapping? No, NLP is neuro-linguistic programming. I knew that. Yeah, neuro-linguistic programming, how we communicate with ourselves and how we communicate with others. Mm -hmm. So if in a dark room or in a breathwork session or in any healing session, I start to get overwhelmed, one great thing to do is to just stand up, you know, and change the scenery. Or, you know, if, if, if I'm deep with eyes closed into some journey with a breathwork thing, opening my eyes is going to change. And tapping, you know, like the, the tapping piece, that, I think that's EFT you're referring to, just to physically feel okay. Go in, what does my arm feel like right now, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's going to put your attention elsewhere than these emotions that are coming up yeah. or these thought patterns that are there, you know. So, yeah, those are a couple – couple brief ways out you know in addition to calling for help if you can but yeah if you're all alone there's other ways you know moving moving to another part of the room you know i was in a small studio but i would literally could go into the bathroom and wash my face off right, right? that's nice. grab some water yeah the five elements go a long way right mm. i don't have sunlight don't have light too much but at least water drink some water you know there's mm. anything in that self-care self-love we can bring in yeah, that's it's great. I mean, and the five elements, I guess you couldn't really have a candle or anything like that. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's something that I've been guided yeah. on that the, the can, you know, candles. I don't know. The fire element's a good one for me and that I should have candles around and everything mm. like that. So it's really it's interesting. So uh, tell me a little bit. I'd like to know because your international travels are, for me, enviable. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like the dream um, to go on spiritual studies in the actual places i mean to go to egypt to go have you been to the middle east uh i mean i guess israel egypt is... i had a, i had a month and a half in israel yeah, yeah. i haven't been to egypt yet that's that's oh top, i that's thought for some reason i had seen that morocco uh, oh yeah. yes yeah. okay yeah other side of that <laughs> continent so yeah. i'd like to ask i mean um do you feel what the what's that what's the benefit of actually really really being there mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and i guess you know certainly interacting with the the locals around those practices, but I don't know. I guess I'm just yeah. kind of going with some subtle earth energy question here. Excellent, yeah. And again, it's one of those things that it's great to imbibe and wonderful to share for those who don't get to hit the six continents and you know 30 countries. So the big piece of feet on the ground is the feeling state. And the fancy Hindu word is the bhav. What's the bhav of this place? Mm. So wow. in Fiji, touching down, you can feel the love and the connection of the people. Like what was, what was breathtaking with Fiji is this place is filled with unconditional love mm -hmm. and acceptance right there, right? And then India, four trips deeper, deeper. Have you been to India yes, before? I have. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The devotion, yeah. right? Sure. You throw a stone, you hit a temple, be mm -hmm. it Ganesh or whatever else. There's just a devotion in the land that's incredible. Right. Middle East, um, uh, just touching down in Qatar, we had uh, like a day and a half there before on the way to India. Could feel this peace. And, and you know, in the Middle East, there, you know, the sand, obviously, that's a different vibe. But the, the, the prayer five times a day wow. that Islam brings on and every the majority of people are Islamic. So there's a level of peace and how you stop five times mm -hmm. a day, whatever you're doing. And pray. It's incredible. Yeah. It, it sets an energetic imprint on the land. And I love California too, but there's an energetic imprint of bustle and go and achieve more in America than some other parts yeah. of the world. Yeah. So that's the beauty of, of travel and really diving into those feeling states of what what's the energetic quality of the land and how can I imbibe that for rewiring or deeper truth or more awareness, what we're looking for. <laughs> It's really great. Um, thank you yeah. for and and it's inspiring because I do feel in a way um, there's really sure there's so much we can learn just 
by watching a show like this these days. But I agree. There's something about, uh, and I've learned the word, I know the word Bob, but I've, I heard it in a new way today. So nice. that's really incredible. So leave us with some final thoughts. I mean, again, we talked about the breath work. Uh, Soul's breath work is um, Prasad's specialization with Souls Enterprise. And um, I don't know, do you want to tell us a little bit more about some of the other programs and some of your thoughts for, for people listening right now? It's a crazy time. Yeah, and, yeah, it is. It is a crazy time. I mean, you can say it's always crazy it times, but yeah, well, there's, there's some specifics going on right now. And yeah, I want to sum it up and offer <laughs> to everyone that you, the takeaway is you don't have to be like me with all the extremes and go for what the Buddhists talk about with that middle path, right? It, and it's okay going far out. Great, you can have the far out experiences, but in the end, there's still just this moment. And how full can this moment be? And back to the breath, just feeling your body, right? And with all the travels, what is most important? Everyone ever says, it's the connection, right? It's being with other people and being with yourself <laughs> and dropping in there. So yeah, uh, at Souls Enterprise, we say connection, compassion, consciousness, the three big tiers. And we have Souls Breathwork, and we do one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching and lots of different offerings to come in and have that togetherness, those shifts where we can rewire and find more truth. <laughs> So great. Beautifully yeah. said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Bonnie. I'm glad you came out of the dark room. <laughs> 49 days. You'd still be in there or something like that. So, no, it was a, a true pleasure. Yeah. And come back again yeah. soon, please. Thank you much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this has been Truth Be Told Transformation. We have three shows a week. On Mondays, Robert Hemsley has the Minuteman Report, and that is at 3 o'clock Pacific. And, of course, Tony Sweet. Yay, Tony! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. He's on every Friday, also live. So, you know, call in and ask him very hard questions. Um, it's really great that you're here. Again, we're just really trying to raise the vibe. There's so much to learn. And really just move forward with, with peace and love wherever you can. Until the next time, namaste. Namaste.